Object number one, an aluminum shaft kayak paddle with black plastic blades. At first, Jayega's sportier citizens enjoyed paddling down the sidewalks where, with, where they once walked. The novelty wore off after it became clear that the still rising waters would never recede. Within a month, even search and rescue teams had abandoned the city. Object number two, a zipper top camouflage canvas fishing tackle box. The Genesis Flood Truth Movement, or Genesis, as they were colloqu colloquially known, had no obvious leader. In a counterintuitive way, its founders were the cable news commentators and coastal editorialists who argued that Jayega's flood proved the, proved the, the climate crisis, excuse me, proved the, the climate crisis severity. Enraged by the media's elite, media elite's pro-science bias, a ragtag group of Christian fundamentalists and anti-government patriots coalesced in opposition. They claimed Jayega had never actually flooded, that the city had always been part of the Atlantic Ocean. In order to prove their point, they moved into half-submerged high-rises and waterlogged skyscrapers. Sailing over highways and casting lines out of corner offices, they lived off of what they could fish from the dying sea. During hurricane seasons, they strung tarps across broken windows. When fish were scarce, they went on night raids, stealing potato chips and beef jerky from seaside gas stations. Perched precariously between surging tides and starvation, their bonds grew tighter and their community stronger. Object number three, a plastic margarita glass branded with Regal Resorts blue and yellow logo. Looking to break into new markets after a period of consolidation and a string of profitable, profitable financial quarters, Regal Resorts saw an opportunity to create a luxury space within the expanding disaster tourism market. They hoped to use the second tallest building in Jayega's old downtown, the Four Seasons Hotel. Built for high-end tourists, it was the ideal location for the first eco-catastrophe leisure experience. Unfortunately, the Genesis had already moved in. Eager to launch a project with high disruptive potential, Regal Resorts re-outfitted the smaller 900 Basque Bay Tower, setting up a beta resort to test the waters. The first group of guests came in by yacht. Over the course of a four-day weekend, they drank flood water margaritas, uh, they scuba dove through underwater ruins, water skied down Main Street, and enjoyed a Hawaiian theme night with roast pig and fiery poi dancing. Meanwhile, the corporation negotiated with the Genesis. Object number four, a $50 gold buffalo coin. Unanticipated cultural differences sabotaged the negotiations opening round. Because the Genesis proudly declared they had adopted a gold standard, Regal Resorts believed they could purchase the Four Seasons building from the group. As a gesture of goodwill, company, company representatives brought a bag of gold coins to their first meeting. Only then did they realize that, detached from any kind of formal national economy, the metal had taken on a purely ceremonial role. It was effectively worthless. The lawyers who arrived at the Four Seasons wore tailor-made suits and thousand-dollar watches. They were greeted by sunburnt women, long-bearded men, <laughs> and children who frolicked in deadly, churning waters. A wiry and underfed people, the Genesis took their bag of gold and poured it into the ocean. When asked why, a red-haired man explained they had to appease the Lord's current and told the mainlanders to leave. On their second visit, the lawyers were told they, could dock they, they couldn't dock unless they could give the gen Genesis fresh meat. After they returned with the gift, they were allowed to come in and talk Whenever the lawyers arrived, the Genesis demanded new clothes, fishing supplies, and suntan lotion. 
Then they rejected any form of settlement or compromise. The process repeated and the lawyers made no progress. Executives at Regal Resort suspected they were negotiating with dishonest actors. The carrot had failed, now they needed a stick. Object number five, a round-tailed muskrat pelt. The Florida water rat doesn't survive long in salt water, but that only made it more suited to the executive's needs. Highly paid trappers comb the region, taking thousands of rodents out of swamps, then quietly sailing them to the flooded four seasons and dumping the animals there at night. The muskrats scurried between walls and made nests in ceilings. Away from their natural environment, they died quickly and in droves. Decaying mammals floated on waves outside the Four Seasons and rotted in ventilation shafts. Regal Resorts waited for the Genesis to abandon the building. A fleet of pest control experts were ready to go and to work and prepare it for a fantastic grand opening. But the Genesis didn't move. Accustomed to a state of constant disaster, the infestation had little impact on their quality of life. They took what they could and ignored the rest. Mothers turned pelts into stuffed animals for children, and fathers used the animal entrails as bait. Frustrated executives gathered in a corporate conference room. No final decision was noted in the meeting's minutes, but shipments of yellow-bellied sea snakes began to arrive from Indonesia. These animals thrived in Jayega's warm coastal waters. They curled under pillows and slithered into shoes. A child playing, playing a game of aquatic hide-and-go-seek was the first to be bit. After he died, Regal Resorts pressed their advantage. They sent a yacht full of gold, food, and clothing to the Four Seasons. It was the largest offer they had made. And when the captain tried to dock, cataracts of shit poured out of the Four Seasons windows. Splattering violently on his deck, it sent a putridly clear message. Genesis songs pulsed a rhythm of, ca of catastrophe and death. Rat infestations, venomous snake bites, children's funerals. These were the melodies of their oldest hymns. They would give no quarter. Object number six, a poi ball. All attempts to reestablish negotiations were met with waterfalls of excrement. The executives have, had overplayed their hand. Resigned to the less glamorous 900 Basque Bay Tower, they hired dozens of contractors and renovated entire floors combining vanguard architecture with devastating luxury. Hotel rooms mirrored the topography outside their windows with tilted rust-colored furnishings and undulating sea green digital art. A playful installation of plastic jellyfish floated in the lobby's brutalist faux concrete atrium Set against a backdrop of vast environmental destruction, the resort became an icon of edgy cosmopolitanism. Expanded day trip offerings included scuba diving, dance parties in submerged clubs, cliff diving off skyscrapers, and jet ski races held over National Football League stadiums, flooded fields. A stargazing spa was built on 900 Basque Bay roofs where guests could spiritually commune with the Milky Way while indulging in snail slime massages. The, the weekly Hawaiian party grew into an orgy of pineapple desserts, floral lays, and interactive poi dancing. Broad-shouldered and crop-haired men sat quietly in the back of every day-trip boat and in front of every resort entrance. Pistols bulged beneath their cool cotton camp shirts and Tommy Bahama khakis. If the Genesis, the Genesis launched a retaliatory attack, the ex executives thought they were prepared to beat it back. They weren't. The vengeful Genesis had already located the resort's weakest point, Hawaiian theme night. The director of activities hired two poi dancers with thin resumes but great bodies. The other dancers asked them how they managed to keep such defined body, such defined muscle tone and stay so trim. In swampy accents, they said they swam a lot and ate fish. 
The night the infiltrators struck, piles of roast pork muffled the scent of gasoline. At first, guests accustomed to the extravagance thought the erupting flames were part of the act. Only when they saw the staff rush toward the exits did they panic. Administrators threw chairs through glass windows and dove into the Black Sea. In the middle of Jayega's old downtown, a 63-story pillar of flame rose out of the water. At an emergency board meeting, the vote was unanimous. With every other resort returning to healthy profits, the downsides of rebuilding heavily outweighed any potential advantages. In an economy of surplus, the risk of further lawsuits, loss of investments, and negative media attention made the decision easy. Regal resorts beat a hasty retreat. 